Continuing to keep you updated on the Pastor Robert Morris and Gateway Church scandal, well, this ripple effect continues. In fact, something has now happened in this story that I predicted was going to happen from the very beginning. And I believe it is just the start of more announcements like this to come. Now, as you know, Robert Morris, gone. His son, James Morris, gone. Multiple elders that were closely tied to Robert Morris throughout the years, gone. Attendance, it's being basically cut in half, 50%. You know, people leaving. The tithe offering's not coming anymore. So we got a big problem here. And now to further distance themselves from Robert Morris and this entire just the stench of it all. Gateway Houston, run by, well, Robert Morris's own daughter, Elaine, and her husband, Gateway Houston senior pastor Ethan Fisher, had a, a big announcement to make during services that were held on Sunday, August 18th. What exactly was that announcement and how did it all come about? We're going to get into it in just a second, but before we do, I want to welcome all of you to Not By Sight News. Yes, blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you as always that we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, that's kind of my only option. Speaking of that, those interested, you want to know my story, how I went blind, how do I operate my entire ministry without being able to see? I made a video that explains it all. You'll find a link to that in the description section of all my videos. Now, before I get into uh, the update here with uh, Robert Morris, Ethan Fisher, Elaine Fisher, I want to give you guys an update on my wife. I'm going to do my best to not make this a long video. I, I always say that and I end up making it long anyway, but um, I've had absolutely no sleep the last 48 hours. Uh, so I, I'm going to do my best, but uh, I almost didn't come on and make this video, but I am going to try my best and, and I'll just, let me just give you the update. Um, and, and forgive me if I'm kind of all over the place. Emotions are running high right now. As, as most of you know, I've been keeping you updated on my wife. She suffered a stroke. A couple of weeks ago, uh, I was gone uh, the longest I had been uh, away from doing videos for you guys in about six years. Um, I didn't have anything out on the channel for almost a week. Uh, but, you know, look, family comes first. You, you got to be there for your loved ones, right? So sometimes you got to put other things on hold. That's what I had to do. Uh, but I informed you all of it in advance to let you know that, you know, I may be disappearing for a while. So at least I was able to keep you guys updated with that. I was gone for about six days. I came back. I let you guys know we were finally back home uh, after being in the hospital for a full week. Um, and as I mentioned before, you know, in addition to the stroke, she developed a vegetation on her heart valve. Uh, doctors are calling it the endocarditis. Uh, she was using antibiotics to treat that. In fact, we had at-home health care that came uh, and basically set us up for her to be giving herself these antibiotics for about six weeks then we would recheck the vegetation and see if it was basically all gone. So we'd only been home for uh, a couple of days. I did a video. I, I did my first video back in six days. I'll let you guys know what was going on. I gave you the update and I said, look, okay, I'm, I'm uh, my wife's going to be out for about six weeks of work and we weren't going to be getting any paychecks from her. So uh, I'm still encouraging, by the way, all of you guys, if you can help us out by making a donation, uh, we still need it, especially with the update I'm going to give you right now. Um, whether you hit the super thanks button on this YT video or you become monthly contributors on my Patreon for as little as five bucks a month at patreon.com slash not by site news. The link is in the description. It all helps. I am trying to get the PayPal set up. I know many people have been asking about PayPal. We are trying. We, the other day we actually got it set up. But we're not done with it yet. I don't have it fully set up to provide a link to you guys yet. Um, hoping I can get that done soon, but it may still take us some time. So in the meantime, please continue to help us out by hitting the super thanks button to donate to us, or you can go ahead and become, again, monthly contributors by joining the Patreon. Uh, now, we'd only been back for a couple of days. My wife had started at-home health treatments. I started getting back into the rotation of doing videos again. I was trying to pump out as much as I can because, as I've said, uh, it's all on me right now. My wife is not getting paid. Uh, it's on me to help pay the bills. Uh, and with my income and everything, and, and your help, of course, as well, which we desperately need right now. On Monday, 
August 19th, I was not here. I, I was actually set. I was getting ready to get into the saddle. I was doing research. I was preparing for the day's videos. And earlier in the day, my wife developed a rash. This became concerning because it quickly started to spread. And by... We, we kind of watched it. You know, we, we had a, a doctor's appointment that morning. We went to it. Uh, she's also on blood thinners as well. She has a clotting disorder on top of the... There's so much, guys, that are, that's going on with her right now. It's, 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 it's truly overwhelming. She doesn't deserve to go through this all. Uh, the rash started to spread. Uh, it was not good. It spread quick, and we had no choice. We had to get her back to the hospital. That's where I've been for the past 24 hours. My wife is still currently in the hospital right now. I came home uh, to shower, get a nap in, which I'm, I desperately need. And again, I'm going to try to get, make this as quick as I can. Uh, but you guys deserve to know the updates because you are the ones that have been donating to us. You've been praying for us. And I don't want to leave you out in the cold. So we ended up in the ER last night. Would have been, well, last night, I say last night, depending on when you watch this video. Monday, August 19th. Spent an obscene just an insane amount of time there. Worst experience. We've been in our hospital now multiple times and had good experiences in the past. This was absolute hell. Uh, to, to describe it, it was like being almost, I could almost describe what hell would be like. And God, I don't, you know, <laughs> we're not going there. Thank God. But uh, the, the treatment there by just the, the staff, everything was just terrible. They left us in this junk room, barely checked on us. They, they, it, it took three hours, like three hours to get her started on any sort of IV Benadryls to get the, the swelling down. Uh, she was getting blotches. I mean, literally all over her body just blew up, swelling all of it. And so we're thinking that she had an allergic reaction to one of the antibiotics that she's on. It only made sense. She had been on them for about eight days and all of a sudden, you know, finally something happened and boom, she flares up all over the place. So in the meantime, I'm sitting there next to her. She's in absolute agony and discomfort. I can't do anything at all. So three hours later, they finally get her started on some IV Benadryl and eventually a steroid, none of which actually did anything at first. She actually swelled up more after they gave her the, um, after they gave her the steroid and had her on the Benadryl. Um, in addition to that, we get, we get there at like 4.30 of the afternoon. They don't start giving her the IV stuff till around 7, 30, 8 o'clock. And then like around midnight, we're still waiting to get admitted to a room. And then a nurse comes in and, and, and says, oh, I understand you're the husband. I said, yeah. I understand you're blind. I said, yeah. Is there a problem with that? And he's like, well, you're not going to be able to stay the night with her. I'm like, excuse me? I was with her all last week. What are you talking about? Can't stay the night. What kind of discrimination is this? And he said something along the lines of, well, you know, if you need help, you know, it's a liability and, you know, the nursing staff has to, you know, be, be here to help your wife, not you. I was like, I'm not asking for your help. Never did. And he's like, well, what if you need to go to the restroom or something? I says, well, I'd go with my wife. If she gets up to go to the bathroom. I go with her. We didn't have a bathroom in the particular room we were in at the time. And he's like, I'll have to check on this. Like, okay, you go, you go check on this. I'm like, this is the last thing I need right now. I, I'm, I'm in tears next to my wife, trying to make her feel comfortable. And I get this guy telling me, oh, you won't be able to stay the night. I was like, excuse me? What did I do to you, right? Discrimination on, and I, this isn't the first time this has happened to me, by the way, but in a hospital of all places? I, so I'm sitting there in my chair next to my wife, just basically shaking. I'm beside myself. I haven't slept. I haven't eaten. Uh, and then about maybe 45 minutes to an hour later, one of the other nurses comes in, not that same guy, uh, and another doctor says, all right, we're getting ready to bring you guys to your room. Uh, and they allowed me to go. And good, because if they didn't, I, was, I don't know what I would have said. Thankfully, God was on our side in that case because that was just another thing to add to the mix here to just you know, make our lives even more miserable than they already were in that moment. And, and again, I, I would have rather stayed in the hospital. I, I, I wish almost that she had the reaction that she did while we were still in the hospital the previous week because... Even if we would have had to have stayed longer, they could have, you know, gotten her off that, maybe started her on something new. But, you know, we, we went home, we had home health here, started on the treatments, and all of a sudden now the rash comes. So we get to the new room around, we, we didn't get to the room, guys, till like 2.30 in the morning, right? And again, remember, we've been there since about 4 in the afternoon, okay? 
and she's still miserable. I think got you know, the room that we had had a bathroom <laughs> makes it easier for actually both me and my wife. Uh, the nurse we had was he was very nice. It, night and day difference than the the, the the hell crew. I want to call them the hell crew that we had on the emergency level floor. And you know we got my wife admitted. Uh, she started finally getting less itchy, and uh, by the time we got admitted and everything, it was three thirty in the morning. Um, there was like a recliner chair in the room. I shut my eyes for a little bit. I maybe slept for an hour, dozed off, but not much. So as of right now, as I'm time of recording this video for you guys, uh, I've been up for nearly 48 hours. Um, so yeah, morning came quickly to say the least. More nurses came in. There was a shift change. Doctors believe that it was in fact an allergic reaction to one of the two antibiotics that she's taking. So they pulled her off the one and uh, they're going to leave her on the other one right now just to make sure that she doesn't have any reaction to that. We, we need this rash to clear. She is getting better, but she still has a lot of itching on her hands and on her feet. So they need to make sure that the other one isn't causing any further problems. Basically, it all needs to go away so they can say, okay, the one antibiotic is good. The other one was not. Add that to the allergic reaction list. Now we can talk about replacing the other one with a second antibiotic, which they do have a name for, but they don't want to start administering to it again until after we can confirm that the other one is safe, which I'm fine with. I don't want to go home again and then, you know, she gets another reaction and we're right back in the hospital again for another week. I don't care. I've told her she's in agreement with me on this. However long we need to stay till we get it right, till we rule out any more reactions, allergic reactions, whatever. Because me and my wife both agree. We are not going to go back for a third time into the hospital and have to endure what we did, the hell that we had to do the other night. It was miserable beyond anything you can ever imagine. And then on top of that, them saying that because you're blind, you can't stay with your wife. And they hit me with that. You just, <laughs> what we have been through, guys, I am doing everything I can to keep it together right now for you. I'm surprised I still am, to be perfectly honest with you. So I was with her all of uh, this morning, which would be the August 20th, Tuesday, all the way through the early afternoon hours, saw a lot of the doctors today. Again, that, that's the plan for right now. Again, as I said, keep going with the original antibiotic, more blood thinners for her, increasing the dosage on that because of the clotting disorder. We have to watch that. Uh, there may be some other things that, that are added in along the way too. So as of right now, she's going to be in the hospital again for another few days at the least. It could be more than that. I'm fine with whatever it takes. We need to get it Make, we need to make sure that it's right. And then after we leave the hospital again, home health care will have to come back out, swap out the antibiotic that's bad that she had a reaction to, to the new one. So there's still a lot and a long way to go for us here. My goal, and this is my goal, doesn't mean I'm going to do it. I'm going to try my best. Now that I know a little bit more about what's going on with her, I'm going to do my best to try and put out at least one video a day at least one until she's back home. And again, I can get back in the saddle again and, you know, do my normal amount of producing of videos that I would do, you know, three, like usually three to four videos in a day, depending on what the news, how the news is. I'm going to try. There, there may again be some days where I just don't get one out because I'm too tired or, you know, I, I got to stay with her at the hospital longer. So guys, I'm going to, I'm going to try for you because you have been great to us. And I, I have to show my appreciation, and, and I feel uh, I'm in I'm in just in debt to you guys um, to come on here and, and, and provide you with updates on her health and our situation, and also bring you these these news videos. So that's the update. That's where we're at right now. I think I got everything out that I needed to do. Um, continue to pray for us. And again, your donations really right now are needed more than ever before. And remember, you can do that by hitting the super thanks button, or you can become monthly contributors on the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month at patreon.com slash not by news. Of course, if you could do more than that, that's even more appreciated. So thank you guys all again. Okay, let me get to the Robert Morris Gateway situation. On August 18th on Sunday, and this was, I was going to talk about this on August 19th, but again, I just, everything with the hospital, we had to go. Ethan Fisher, senior pastor of Gateway Houston. I called it. I said, watch, Gateway churches are going to start to rebrand in, in, in the wake of the Robert Morris scandal. They're going to want to distance themselves from him, get rid of the stench that Gateway name carries. Well, that's what they did. They announced that 
Gateway Houston is no longer going to be Gateway Houston. They are renaming, they are rebranding the church to Newlands Church. That's the name that they have chosen for the new church. Newlands Church. There's this big promotional video they showed during the service with uh, Pastor Ethan Fisher and his wife Elaine, which is Robert Morris's daughter. Now, here's the problem I have with this. Even though I predicted it, the problem I have with this is the reasoning that they gave behind the change. They said that this name change was God and that this was all in the works for at least a year. There was talks of a transition and, you know, going to this new name. You know, they didn't mention Robert Morris, but, you know, you would indicate before all the Robert Morris allegations came out and that it was time to step into something new and a fresh season. This is the usual sort of what I call spiritual mumbo jumbo language that we hear from churches when they are trying to do everything they can to recover from scandal. Now, back in June, when Robert Morris originally resigned, Ethan Fisher had spoke about how, you know, Gateway Houston was autonomous and that Robert Morris really didn't have any pull there, although he kind of did because he was the overseer, the apostolic head of Gateway Houston um, until he was removed after his resignation. Make no mistake about it. As I've always said throughout the story, Gateway Church is Robert Morris. Robert Morris is Gateway Church. But the reasoning that Ethan Fisher gave here about how it's God's new season, we're coming into something new, we had this plan for a while, it's all lies. Just say what it is. You don't want to be associated with somebody who did what they did to Sidney Clemens here, and maybe even more. Why do we have such a problem in the church of being transparent? I talk about this all the time. But yet they continue to just cover it up with this spiritual language, right? Oh, new season, something new. God named it. God wanted it. No, no, he didn't. You did, because you're trying to distance yourself from your father-in-law. You're trying to do everything you can to keep the people that you have so they don't leave in droves like they did at the South Lake campus. That's what's going on here. Why can't they just say that? Honesty goes a long way with people. You would do good by admitting that you don't want to be associated with the gateway name anymore because of what has happened. But they can't do that. They have to give you this spiritual stuff that, you know, the, the, the Lord prophesied to me, whatever the case. So they also said that watch for in the coming months, the signage is going to start changing. The full transition to Newlands Church will take effect by 2025 and the Gateway Houston name will be no more. Now, again, will there be more that follow? I think so. I also think that some of these Gateway churches may end up closing altogether. Remember, Gateway just canceled their annual conference that was scheduled, the big annual conference they do every year. They canceled it, and the reason they did was because they said they are still trying to navigate <laughs> navigate the resignation of Robert Morris and everything that he did, whatever that means, navigating it. They're still holding church services. Remember, they got Max Lucato on board to be the interim teaching pastor for the next six months. So that's the update, and I, I want to hear from you guys on this. You can let me know your thoughts in the comment section. What do you think about the name change? Newlands Church, uh, do you think that, you know, again, this they were just trying to cover things up. Do you think they should have been more transparent? Do you believe their reasoning that this was all planned a while ago? Uh, it was called by God, all of these things. Uh, let me know. And again, uh, you guys support if you can donate to help out me and my wife in our time. Uh, we'd really appreciate that. Remember, you can hit the super thanks button on the YT video or become monthly contributors on Patreon for as little as five bucks a month at patreon.com slash not by site news. What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, let's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. It's an altar call that I've been doing here on the videos since 2016. No matter what it is that I'm discussing in the church, exposing the corruption of the wolves that occupy its pulpits, we always want to give people the opportunity to receive Christ as Savior. That said, anybody watching now, if you're someone that's not yet received Jesus as Lord and Savior, you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That's something we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. As he died and rose again for you and me, he paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin, means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and jump back to your old ways, but actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, to wipe your sin away, 
The Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make. When you do, give your life to Christ. I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'm going to go get some sleep because I'm about to pass out. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk. Please soon.